Sandy Boardman. I own Carlwood Farm LLC, a dairy farm in Caney, Connecticut. We milk 55 registered Holsteins and Jerseys and raise another 60 to 65 young stock. And when I say young stock, that's under two years old. They haven't had babies yet. My grandparents started this farm, Carwood Farm, in um, 1941, um, a mile down the road. They milked about 25 cows. And in 1943, they purchased this barn, which was an old horse barn. So being an Agrimark member and being a Cabot owner, the reason why our Cabot products are so wonderful is because we as Agrimark members take great pride in making great quality milk. And this is our proof. That I call this um, my wall of perfection. We have gotten quality awards since they started handing the awards out in the year 2000. And every year except for two years, we have received a quality award for our milk. Now it takes really good quality milk to make a really good quality product. And like I said, as an Agrimark member, we strive to have healthy animals. We strive to make good, clean milk. And this is proof of what goes into the Cabot products that you buy in the store, whether it's cheese, which most of it is made in Vermont, um, but certainly the Cabot butter that my milk gets shipped into. Um, the milk truck just left here a short time ago and my load today was going into West Springfield uh, which is being made into Cabot butter today. So that's where my milk went locally today and that'll be on the store shelves within a week. For This is my daughter Sherry. She's an integral part of the dairy farm here at Carwood Farm. Even though she lives in New York on a dairy farm now, another Agrimark member farm, uh, she still comes home to help on this farm. So that, that's one of the positives about being a small dairy farm is I was able, like I said, I was able to bring my kids to work. They were raised here. Uh, they uh, learned the appreciation of hard work. They learned the appreciation of um, watching the cycle of life they learn the appreciation of the cycle of the crops um, from planting to harvest. And that was uh, one of the positives about being a small family farm. Now, when we talk about the challenges of being a small family farm versus a larger farm, some of the drawbacks are I, I don't buy in bulk like the big farms do. So my price, prices for feed are a little more expensive. Uh, we're just thinking forward a few weeks about planting corn, spreading fertilizer, um, and buying, again, in bulk for a large farm. It's much cheaper than what I'm going to pay for my corn seed. I have to pay a little bit more. It's kind of like going to a big, big store like a BJ's or Costco and when you buy in bulk, you get it cheaper. The same thing happens here on the small um, family farm. So the another drawback of being a small farm is it's hard for me to hire someone full time. There just isn't a whole lot of cash flow to be able to pay someone full time. So I do the majority of the work myself along with the children. Uh, my grown children and on the positive side of that if I were to have full-time employees and someone called in sick I'm able to handle it all myself so I can be a one-woman show I don't need to depend on other people although it's great to have other people um, to lend a helping hand I mentioned that we ship uh, a million pounds of milk we sell our milk by the pound. We are paid for every hundred pounds that we sell. That's how our pricing goes. Uh, to explain it in better terms, a million pounds of milk a year is 125,000 gallons in the store.
So 125,000 individual gallons is what this farm produces each year. So being able to have choices in the marketplace is a really good thing. We as consumers, especially as millennial consumers, like to be able to have a choice, especially when it comes to dairy products. So whether you want to choose a certain type of cheese, a certain type of yogurt, whether it be Greek yogurt or um, a different type of um, Icelandic yogurt, you could be choosing between um, ice creams, cottage cheeses, and then fluid milk. And when it comes to fluid milk in the marketplace, there are a number of different companies that bottle fluid milk. Um, and it's likewise across the whole entire uh, dairy showcase. If you're in the grocery store and you're looking at all the different dairy products, there's a ton of different competitors that are out there. You will see Cabot cheese in and amongst those uh, competitors. And we pride ourselves as being farmer owners of our product. There are not very many dairy products that are out there that um, are packaged under a label that can state that they are farmer owned. So as we are in this COVID-19 pandemic, it has certainly influenced the dairy industry. We have schools that are closed, restaurants that are no longer serving the typical food um, and using the products that we um, would, that our milk would be processed into. So currently right now in the United States, there is 10%, this is give or take, 10% um, oversupply of fluid milk, which is creating an issue in itself uh, for farmers. We cannot simply just tell a cow that she needs to take a nap today and not produce milk today. She needs to be milked two or three times a day and continue with her routine. Cows really like routine, and that's something that we on our farms make sure that we provide for them every single day. We feed them, we milk them, um, we clean them. They are cared for um, sometimes better than us on a daily basis. So during this pandemic, we have to be aware of the oversupply of fluid right now. We hope to see our processing plants um, continue to be able to keep up with production as best they can.